school Zoom meeting. Um, actually, we have a school meeting, meeting, but check your email. Um, we plan on having a, a more of a faculty meeting online about 12:15. So please check your email. Thank you. So I have to check that. making sure so you start off perfect you said hey uh, you're doing a really good job of keeping track of F versus F prime which is critical you correctly stated they want you to figure out basically when F is increasing or decreasing and so you correctly deduce that without a graph of F my next best option is a sign chart of F prime because I'm focused on the signs of F prime so the convenient thing for this homework assignment is the derivative for question two is exactly the same as the derivative for question one, so we get a little bit of a head start there. So we're gonna have one minus natural log of x divided by x squared. Are you okay to there, Isaac? Yeah. Keep talking. Um, and then I just started plugging in things to find a zero on a sign chart. And I found e. Yep. So uh, you identified that when x has a value of e, which is approximately 2.7, that e, when plugged into this formula for f prime, would produce a numerator of 0, bottom of e squared. 0 divided by e squared would definitely be 0. Um, the only other one I could find was I plugged in one. I think it'd be positive. So don't worry about the testing yet. We just we want to make sure we find all the places, all the x's, which will cause f prime to either be zero or undefined. So best thing to do is focus on numerator and denominator separately. So the only thing that will cause that to be zero is what you said when x equals e. So we're good there. You do have to remember this fact. Natural log of zero is undefined. Uh, natural log of any negative number is also undefined. Okay. So I do need to account for that as well, that when x equals zero, my f prime value will be undefined. Good there. Uh, now I look at the bottom. I also want to find any x's that would cause the bottom to equal zero. Don't think too hard, Isaac. What are the x's which make the bottom zero? Zero. Zero itself. So we're good there. We've accounted for that. Because if you plug the zero, you know, remember when you plug in for x, you plug it in both places. If I were to put a zero here and here, the top's undefined because of ln, but the whole fraction is undefined because we would be dividing by zero. So either way, I'm pretty content. Uh, now is when you test. So you pick a value between x equals zero. Notice how I emphasize x, that's critical. And x equal e. So what value do you want to pick? One. Sure. This means you're going to plug a 1 in here, and also a 1 here. So the bottom will be positive or negative? Bottom will be positive. Good. Next, so I have a 1 equals? 0. 1 minus 0 is? 1. Positive. I don't care about the numbers. Positive divided by positive is, Isaac? Positive. You okay with that? Yeah. Perfect. Uh, questions from anyone? Anything bothering anybody? Kim? Sorry, I just have this quick one. When it says like uh, tangent squared 
does that just mean like like two times tangent or whatever? I forgot like. Uh, so you have to remember that tangent squared means the. something else. So we got to test over here. What do you want to test over here? So I did this in fourth period today, eighth period. I'm going to give a ticket to every single person in the room who'd like to earn one. You have to earn it, of course. Um, so we got to change this back to X. Hold on. Okay, so picking three is very logical. Because three is certainly greater than 2.7. So three is greater than E. However, when I go to perform the test, I personally run into a roadblock. Because I've got to take that value for X and plug a value of X equal three in for the X here, as well as the X here. I'll pay you a full ticket if you can tell me the roadblock. Why does that, why am I like, oh, that's not going to work. I can't do that. What's the reason why? So, Ellie? Oh, oh sorry, who's Ellie? Lots of Ellie's. Oh, my God. Because, um, like, you don't know the natural log of three, like, Yeah, we're not expected to have the natural log of three memorized as a decimal equivalent. So I don't know what to say when I'm asked, okay, what's one minus natural log of three? I just don't know. Uh, please raise your hand if you can honestly say that you understood that roadblock that Kelly just described. There we go. Someone else, please raise your hand and tell me what would be a more appropriate value of x that we can use to test. Let's go, L.A. Jacobson. E squared. E squared. E squared is certainly greater than E. And I know the value of the natural log of E squared. L.A. Jacobson, what's the value of the natural log of E squared? Two. So when I plug in then e squared on the top, I'm going to get one minus two, which is positive or negative? Negative. negative. The bottom is going to be e squared. Isaac, is that positive or negative? Positive. Positive. Uh, three points for Ellie. Questions? Wouldn't it be e squared squared? Oh, thank you. Three points for that. Yeah, the bottom would actually be e squared squared. Uh, result still positive, of course, but much better. Yeah, yeah. Well done. Fixing up the chart here. You don't really care that the scale is wrong, as long as I get the signs in the right places. Questions to there. So if you're working on other things, keep working. Otherwise, I just want to make sure it's all making sense to you. Show me the answer on your hand, like we do in class. You know. Show me the answer on your hand. Be patient, we're just waiting for a couple more to find it. So. Um, why do you not have to press the value that's less than zero? Oh, outstanding. Ah, uh, because of this. The formula they gave me is here. And that means that formula isn't valid for any x's that are 0 or negative. Um, because the ln isn't valid for So it's defined, undefined when it's 0 or it gets all yeah. So only concern ourselves with x greater than 0. Uh, because of the ln functions. Okay. All right, two points. Who has, show me your vote again. Answer. Show me your vote. 
for doing this. Give yourself five. Good work. Correct answer is Did that answer your question? Yeah. One more. Please. Uh, a long one's fine, too. So what is the purpose of finding What do you do? Oh. Hold on. Everyone listen to this. It's very good. No one's asked. I've done this for six periods, you know. Actually, like 12 now, because we did it two days in a row. Um, no one's asked that. <laughs> like, and it's, it, it's perfect. Uh, it's all about the idea that when you're making a sign chart, I don't know how to say it. Like, the x coordinates where what you are charting is undefined or zero, those are the possible transitions. Like, you're not going to have plus, plus, minus, like this, unless in between there is a zero or undefined for the problems that we analyze as a class. So I've got to find the transitions so that I can be confident that in between I don't have to test a lot. Does that make sense? Yeah. Perfect. We good here? Paul, questions before I stop the recording? Cool. Anyone come 